I always enjoy answering subscriber questions, especially when we can take a look at a new motherboard that otherwise we might not always take a look at. And the one we're looking at today is, again, answering a subscriber question. Comment. And this is in response to our video about the ASUS Hyper M.2 16 PCI Express 4.0 x 4 quad card heat and speed test. And this question I'll scroll down to is from Dax Gaming. Great video. Can you install this and run it as four independent drives and not as a RAID configuration? My first response, welcome, absolutely. That's the first step in configuration. Getting the Hyper M.2 16 and four M.2 NVMe PCI Express drives installed and recognized by the BIOS. Requires one by 16 PCI Express slot electrically, bifurcated or split from by 16 to four by four by four by four. The ASUS BIOS or Unified EFI references this to RAID, but that naming convention is a misnomer in my opinion. RAID would be the next step, whether in BIOS, Unified EFI, or OS in configuration, if so desired. But to reiterate, not required. Hope that helps. Clarity, thanks for asking. Dax, thanks so much. I've been looking at the literature and was puzzled if I could do four separate. Thanks for confirming. Absolutely. I'm running an ASUS, which will be the title of our video. Republic of Gamers Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi with the X570 chipset. So I'll need to check all is good. Our response. That may be a problem. What chipset? Now that we know. I'd like to do a video response to explain the what, why, and how. Also what GPU. Response. DAX Gaming. That sounds great. The motherboard. X570. PCI Express 4. 16 power stages. It's interesting all the other stuff. All I needed was a chipset. Anyway, CPU is a 5950, great, 16 cores, and the GPU is an MSI RTX 3080 Ti Supermax, 12 gig. Congratulations, fantastic. And this is our video response. As always, problem and solutions, identifying what the problem is, because sometimes we answer a question, creates another problem. The problem. We need to take a look at the motherboard, examine the chipset, we'll look at the processor. Uh, we uh, always have a pretty good idea of what's going on, but as always, Never take any of this for granted because every motherboard is different and no matter if you've got the same brand of motherboard, specifically he's working with ASUS, so that's in our favor. Number two, we know the chipset. That gives us a pretty good idea where we're going. But even knowing the brand of motherboard and the chipset and the model, every model is different because it's all about how those resources are allocated. So what we need to look at is what he's got for PCI Express resources. We know what we need. We need to figure out if we've got what we need and the two requirements for about 16 quad card, no matter what brand you've got. We've done several videos, and i got to interject. As many videos as we've done about these quad cards, I always thought when we originally did the first video about that, which now has, I believe that was on the Gigabyte card, on an X399 chipset, that video has had over 100,000 views. I would have been happy if that video had had 1,500 views because I always thought that was an esoteric topic. Not at all. I, I'm just blown over, amazed, and, and pleased by how many people are interested in that one thing. I'm getting where I can do it in my sleep, but it gives me the chance, like we're doing now, to look at these different motherboards. And my question is always of the what, why, and how. Why this motherboard? How does this motherboard work? And what made you choose that particular motherboard at the time? Now, this may turn out, and I think it's going to be a coulda, shoulda, woulda, and I'll come back to that. Because the first thing we need to do, we'll go to the motherboard, we need to go to support. This one this time is not about the BIOS, this one this time is about the manual. And the manual we need, sometimes there's anywhere from one to four manuals. Sometimes the motherboard manual is accompanied also by, could be a uh, BIOS manual, could be a features manual. But a lot of times we've seen motherboards with at least two manuals we need to look at. And all we've got is a user's manual. So we're going to download that manual, and we're going to see how that motherboard is laid out. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a search for specifications. All right, the things we're going to need to find, we have a specification summary. We have a motherboard layout. We have expansion slots that we need to look at. And we're also going to need to look at the resources on the M.2 connectors. Okay, first things first. Let's go look at the specification summary. All right, we're looking at an X570 chipset, four DIMMs, maximum 128 gigs of memory. Uh, because of the motherboard chipset and the way this is laid out, we're talking dual channels. So even though there's four slots, 
you only want to use two slots and this needs to stay with uh, Windows 10 because of the TPM if you decide to go with Windows 11 until that's all fixed sorted out and dealt with the TPM needs to be a real TPM so as long as you stick with Windows 10 you're going to be fine no TPM however if you're going to go with the TPM don't use the virtual TPM especially if you're doing audio you'll get some of that stuttering where the system is like first of all remember Windows is not a real-time operating system I got a little thing a little squeeze toy that does this that I have got that to show you as an example of about DPC latency well we still got that to do but just safe to say Windows again to reiterate is not a real-time operating system so stick with Windows 10 keep it simple and stick on the dual channel with only two memory sticks so you don't run into those issues with performance DDR4 3200 would be my recommendation whatever else you go with fine alright here's what we need on the slots number one we're looking at two PCI Express 4.0 by 16 slots single slot by 16 electrically dual slot by 8 electrically in other words if you're going to use both those slots together which would be slot 1 and 2 because it will be a PCI Express with 16 underscore 1, 2 and 3 1 and 2 are going to be shared so you get a by 8 and a by 8 so remember this is about a quad card and a quad card requires what number 1 a 16 lane slot electrically and you want to have the ability number two to be able to bifurcate the slot bifurcate means to split or to fork and that requires that slot where that card sits whatever slot it is preferably to the CPU to be able to four by four by four by four because each M.2 NVMe drive requires four PCI Express lanes hence a 16 lane slot with four by four four by four 16 lanes okay so as we look at this we'll look at slot number three and we'll look at the board layout to reiterate that okay on the chipset slot number three PCI Express 4.0 by 16 mechanically electrically is by four and then there is a uh, PCI Express 4.0 single lane slot that would be good for like a uh, just an FYI in a single lane slot you could put a capture card that does 1080 or you could put a USB card in there say like if you needed something with the Renesis chipset on it uh, another video another topic oh and that reminds me Renesis and I'll if I can remember somebody remind me I'll get a link up in the description Renesis has now come out with PCI Express 6 chips that's PCI Express 5.0 backwards compatible PCI Express 5 I think is going to be short-lived so start thinking and about and watching for PCI Express 6 and that release from Renesis is the first thing I've seen so uh, the reason for that if you decided you needed high performance bandwidth on USB 3 not USB C but on USB 3 then you'd want to put in like a Renesis card to give you that bandwidth uh, depending on the card you use a single lane slot or a four lane slot depending on the ports that are on there look for the Renesis chipset and uh, all these other USB 3 chipsets that have been problems with the uh, bandwidth issue again focus on Renesis do what works we found that out back when we had PCI Express 2.0 and PCI Express 2.0 is when we started learning about lanes when we started getting access to the M.2 NVMe technology so we've come a long way in a short amount of time the other thing we want to look at and we're going to look at the layout in just a second we're going to look at the M.2 drives and see how those are situated. All right, we have one M.2 to the processor, and through the chipset, we have one M.2. Okay, that's what I wanted to find out. We'll go back to the beginning of the manual, specifications, and this time let's look at the motherboard layout. Three slots PCI Express with 16 underscore one, two, and three an M.2 underscore 1 and an M.2 underscore 2 so physically it should work the problem is going to be the BIOS so what we've got to look at is we're looking in the manual for something either that says um, this is ASUS so we're looking for something that either says uh, bifurcation shared bandwidth more likely with ASUS it'll either say hyper which it used to originally now they're using other terms like RAID hyper RAID uh, don't know why they label it that way because that clarification I think 
that terminology is a misnomer and the clarification being the functionality of RAID for a quad card is a separate deal because a quad card in and of itself is strictly an I.O. card that takes four drives. And there's two types of those cards. The ones that require motherboard bifurcation, which is what we're looking at. The other kind is self-bifurcated. And those self-bifurcated cards are like buying another motherboard and then some because they have a PLX chip that does the lane switching. So what we're trying to determine is let's check the BIOS. And what we want to find, let's do a search for PCIe, PCIe 16. And what we have, the first layout showing PCIe, what's the page, how's this labeled? Expansion slots, okay, makes sense. Uh, we're looking for shared bandwidth. So the first thing we see is PCIe by 16 underscore 1, 2, and 3. PCIe by 1, which is that little rascal right there, which is uses one lane, one slot. So let's keep looking. Okay, PCIe operating mode. In some manuals, they might, they might call this shared bandwidth. That's what we want. PCI Express by 16, underscore 1, 2, and 3. Number 1 by 16, and number 1 and 2 by 8, and then number 3 is by 4, and number 3 is through the chipset. Okay, M.2 underscore 1 by 4, and that should be to the CPU, and M.2 underscore 2 pretty much through the chipset, also by four. Let's take a look at your processor right quick. So you have a 5950, and we are working with, yeah, right there it is. We have 16 cores, 32 threads, and we should have, I want to see if it'll tell us, we're PCI Express 4. Anyway, there should be 20 lanes to that CPU. So that allows us, on this motherboard, to have PCI Express with 16 underscore one, and M.2 underscore 1. So that takes our 20 lanes. Now what we've got to find in the BIOS, we're looking for, it probably says hyper. Yeah, here it is. They call it RAID mode. Okay, what we're looking at now on the page for onboard device configuration, they call this PCI Express plus 16 underscore 2 bandwidth. And if you'll notice, there's nothing about PCI Express plus 16 underscore 1. To reiterate underscore 2, and nothing about underscore three, so it cannot be changed either. So, what we're looking at, we need bifurcation. We want to see four drives. Uh, and there's another document that ASUS has with compatibility for chipsets for the Hyper Quad card, but I'll have the link up in the description. I don't want to show you here because personally I think it's a little bit confusing with the way the information is uh, presented. Um, just suffice it to say, no matter what that document says that I've just referred to, what matters is what this bio says. But even more important is what you see um, in your motherboard bios. And if these are congruent, according to what we're reading, there's nothing we can do to PCI Express with 16 underscore 1 that we can bifurcate that slot, which the way they're wording that now is PCI Express RAID mode. Now, again, to reiterate, it's not RAID mode. It's bifurcation mode. RAID would be the second step. However, if you bifurcate that slot from a by 8 slot to PCIe RAID mode, what you're going to get, because it's by 8, is you're going to run 4 plus 4. So instead of seeing 4 drives on a quad card, you're going to see 2 drives on a quad card. And what I'm not sure about is uh, how those drives are seen. In other words, I'm not sure if they're sequential or not. And the reason I say that is because if you can't use a quad card, then why not use a dual adapter? Well, the problem is, again the numbering. So I'll have the other document, but I, but I don't think you want to try to do that. Some have. And some of the motherboards with this chipset will allow you to bifurcate that first slot. This motherboard will not. Uh, why ASUS does that? Now, again, you have an ASUS motherboard. They've done the most of any vendor to open up this capability. Now, what we have to remember, these quad cards are designed for a server, a workstation, then a high-end desktop. Everything else is below that. So anything below a high-end desktop, I'm going to call a low-end desktop. Anything that's not, and I, I only name my favorite chipset. So on a high-end desktop, because of PCI Express 4, it was an X399, but that was PCI Express 3. So the TRX40, which is the machine I show the most here, which was great, bang for the buck. However, now I say for PCI Express 4, to jump over this and go to a WRX80, of which in the last video I just announced, 
Of the seven motherboards, we finally have motherboard, let's call it number three in the list, which is actually number four, but it's Gigabyte's second board that's now available for the WRX80, which is pretty cool because it's a server board, CEB format, which means rack mount. So stay tuned for that. But I digress and mention that because those are the kind of platforms a quad card is made for. Can we make it work on your machine? The what, why, and how? You'd only see two drives, only in the second slot. You can't put it in the first slot because if you did... Now, the other option is if you don't use a quad card because you haven't bought one yet, which means you don't have those four drives. If you bought, let's say, a quad card like uh, I'll mention High Point or uh, Glow Trends, uh, they have self-bifurcated cards. Now, here's the next issue. Most of the, like High Point, self-bifurcated cards require a 16-lane slot. If you don't use that second slot, which means you put your GPU in the third slot, which I wouldn't do, but you can. Some have. It's the equivalent of uh, your GPU in an external contain container like a uh, eGPU through Thunderbolt, but I wouldn't do it. But I have to tell you about it. Or else if I don't, somebody else will. So if we uh, go with the uh, potential of an eight-lane slot, you can't use a high point card because if your GPU is in the second one and you still want to do this in the first one, then you've got to look at a Glow Trends, and Glow Trends has a Sky card. We have a video up on that that will work in an eight-lane slot. However, it's PCI Express 3. They don't have a PCI Express 4, 4 version out yet. So that's where that sits. And if you want PCI Express 4, you could use a dual adapter for which Supermicro has the best dual adapter, but I'm not sure about, about the numbering sequence on that slot based on the way ASUS is doing things, the way they monkey with that. If those are sequential, that'll work. If they're not sequential, it won't. Now, the dual adapter works on the TRX40 Designare. The quad adapters all work on the TRX40 Designare. I've been through 16-lane slots. I've been through 8-lane slots. Lots of videos on all that. We've shown all that, uh, which gives us a unique ability to look at this and these motherboards because I get a kick out of this. I'm always curious, and this is the coulda, shoulda, woulda. If you had known what you know now, would you still get that same motherboard? And that's always the conundrum. Looking again at the slots, what the BIOS does is the, is the most important. The motherboard layout is one thing, what can physically work, but what matters most is what's in the BIOS. And with that, that's kind of where that sits. So it's, it's not ideal. That's why I wanted to do a video response, because again, to reiterate, looking at these motherboards is amazing. And, and again, the coulda, shoulda, woulda. Now that you know this, would you have purchased a different? And, and the reason I say this is because we're going to do another video because of the one we did two back about a motherboard I mentioned that was $1,250 with a chipset I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. Well, there's a motherboard a lot of people are giddy about that's in that price range that we're going to look at later on because I'm curious what makes a $1,250 motherboard. When you look at a WRX80 motherboard for around $700, that will do everything. Only problem is getting our hands on a processor because Lenovo is supposed to be the first that has the Threadripper Pro 5000 series CPU, but they're not even showing it yet. I won't even bother, but I had to tell you about it since I mentioned the other. Folks, I enjoy looking at these motherboards. It's amazing. But I got to tell you, I hope by doing what we're doing, more of you will come to us before the fact so you don't have to deal with the coulda, shoulda, woulda. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is something that should be shared, and that's what we're trying to do. So I want to thank you for watching. My name's Gil Boyd. This is Builder By. Welcome. Thanks for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next video. We're out.